Today on Sugar Spun Round, we'll be making coffee cake cookies. Hey Sugar Spun Bakers, Sam here, and today I am so excited to be sharing another carefully tested, well-researched, and perfected recipe. We're making coffee cake cookies. I've taken one of my favorite brunch recipes and I have condensed it into cookie form. These are amazing gourmet cookies. I think you're going to love them. So let's get started by preheating our oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Now in a large mixing bowl, we're going to combine one half cup or one stick of softened unsalted butter. And this is pretty soft, a little softer than I like it to be, honestly. So I'm going to make sure I get all of that butter in there we do not waste butter around here, ever. We'll combine that with one half cup of firmly packed light brown sugar and a fourth cup of granulated sugar. Now today's recipe could be made in a stand mixer if you'd like, but I am going to just be using my electric hand mixer today. And we will beat these ingredients together until they are well creamed. All right, once that's looking good, we're going to add one large egg. Drop that right in there. This is a room temperature egg. I recommend all of your ingredients be room temperature. We're also going to add just a fourth teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now it's a small amount of vanilla extract. You don't wanna go crazy with the vanilla. It can make this cookie seem too sweet, but you do wanna add a little bit so you have a nice depth of flavor. So a fourth is just the perfect amount. Now we'll stir in that egg and vanilla and we will set this aside. Now you're going to need a separate mixing bowl. Now to this, add two cups of cake flour. If you don't have cake flour, you can substitute all purpose. I will include that substitution in the printable recipe in the description. However, I really like to use cake flour because it's going to make the cookie even more tender and more soft. It's not going to make the cookie cakey, but since we are trying to replicate a coffee cake, the crumb is a lot more reminiscent of a coffee cake. Whereas using regular flour makes it feel more like a sugar cookie or something. So I think it's worth getting that extra ingredient you may not normally keep on hand. Plus I've been sharing a lot of recipes that use cake flour recently and it's just, it's, it's always been worth it. Now, in addition to the cake flour, we're going to need a tablespoon of cornstarch. And again, this is going to help give us that perfect tender texture. We'll also add a teaspoon of baking powder, a fourth teaspoon of baking soda, and a half teaspoon of salt. This is just regular old table salt. Whisk everything together. Now let's bring back our butter and sugar mixture. And we're going to just gradually add, oop, gradually add the dry ingredients. I like to do this in like three parts and stir on low speed until completely combined before adding the next part. You don't want to just dump all of the flour in there at once because that can overwhelm your dough. We need that flour to get absorbed by the wet ingredients and it can be difficult to do if you just add everything at once and you can end up with a super crumbly dough that is difficult to work with. Anytime I get a comment that says, oh, the dough is just too crumbly, it usually is just because the flour has been added too quickly, which is frustrating, I get that. All right, part number three. And we are going to want to use a spatula to scrape the sides and bottom of the bowl, make sure we didn't miss any of that flour. Okay, this looks great. It looks like I actually don't need to mix it anymore. So I am going to cover it with plastic wrap. And I'm going to pop it in the fridge for just a couple of minutes while I prepare my streusel topping. So for the streusel, the first thing you're going to want to do is melt six tablespoons of unsalted butter. Set this aside, let it cool down a little bit. You don't want it to be too hot when you add it to your dry ingredients. The dry ingredients, you need one and a fourth cups of all purpose flour. And to this, we add a half cup of firmly packed light brown sugar, one third cup of granulated sugar. I like to add three fourths teaspoon of ground cinnamon and just a fourth teaspoon of salt. If you used salted butter for your streusel, you would just skip adding the salt here. I'm just going to stir everything together until these ingredients are nicely combined. Just using a fork because that's what I'll be using in a moment when I add the butter. And this is my classic streusel that I use. It's not a classic streusel because that's typically made with very cold butter and you have to use a pastry cutter and cut it in and everything. I prefer my method, which uses melted butter. It's just easier, gives you a more flavorful streusel in my opinion. So, so long as your butter isn't too hot, which mine isn't, we'll drizzle this over our dry ingredients. And again, we do not waste butter. Please don't waste it. 
And now to get this combined, use a fork and just sort of claw everything together. Don't mix, don't like stir it. If you do that, you're going to end up with a paste. You just wanna just toss it and claw it and get everything gently combined. Otherwise, like I said, you'll end up with a paste and that is just going to be more difficult to use and it's not as enjoyable to eat, nor is it as pretty to look at. Or I guess I should say, nor is it as easy on the eyes because you can hear my mom yelling at me for ending a sentence with a preposition. Or is it okay there? I don't know, I get confused. All right, we want to make sure we don't have any dry pockets of flour remaining. This looks pretty good. A little bit there, I wanna get worked in. Nice and crumbly, this is looking pretty good. So let's grab our cookie dough. So your cookie dough, take a look at it, or maybe give it a feel, and you wanna make sure it doesn't seem too sticky. It shouldn't be too sticky, but if yours is too difficult to manage, just leave it in the fridge for another like five minutes or so. Now we're going to scoop this dough into two tablespoon sized balls. This is my one and a half tablespoon size scoop. I've just done a heaping portion. I'm going to roll this into a round ball place it on our cookie sheet. We're going to space these at least two inches apart because the cookies are going to spread. Now we're just going to make a nice little nest or indent in the center of each cookie. I'm using the back of a rounded tablespoon to do this. You could just use your thumb. Just make sure you make the crater big enough. Go over these one more time. Now we are going to take a heaping portion of this streusel, like a handful of it, and we are going to nestle this into the center of our cookies. And I never actually measured this before, but I should probably do that. I'd say I'm adding about a little less than two tablespoons of streusel per cookie. One handful isn't the best unit of measurement, I suppose. It's okay if things get a little bit messy, no big deal. You can see it's sort of like mounded in the center of the cookie dough, it's not a flat layer. All right, now we will bake these in the center rack of our 350 degree Fahrenheit preheated oven, where they're going to need to bake for about 12 minutes or until the edges are just beginning to turn a very light golden brown. All right, we are going to let these cookies cool completely before we add the finishing touch to them. While they are cooling, let me move these out of the way, we can go ahead and prepare our glaze, which is just a super simple sugar glaze like you would find on a classic coffee cake. We start with two thirds cup of powdered sugar. You're going to need a whisk. And I have two tablespoons of whole milk measured out here. I'm just going to add about one tablespoon right now. I'm going to whisk this together. And then if needed, I will add additional milk, a splash at a time until I have a thin glaze. You can see that's not gonna be enough, so just gonna add a little bit more. You can really make this as thick or as thin as you'd like. This glaze is a little thinner than I usually go for. I was a little extra ambitious with my milk adding, but I'm pretty happy with it. So once my cookies are cooled, we can go ahead and decorate them. I always will put my cookies over a piece of wax paper. That way it'll catch any spills and I don't have to wipe up my counter so much. Grab a spoon. All right, now you can drizzle as much or as little glaze over the cookies as you'd like. Alternatively, you could sprinkle powdered sugar over the cookies, that would also look pretty. I did try that, I just didn't like it as much as the glaze. And this recipe will make you a dozen nice big gourmet cookies. Oh, that was my worst glaze yet, it's okay. They don't have to be perfect. All right, and that is how you make these coffee cake cookies. I really hope you enjoyed this recipe, and if you try it, please leave me a comment, let me know what you think. I always love hearing from you. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Nah. That? You wanna try that? You're taking Luke's spot. Which one? Nah. That one? Here, how about this one? Yeah? yeah? Okay, go ahead, try a bite. What do you think? Uh, yeah, good? You're right. It's really good. He doesn't get sugar like this, like, ever. It is good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs>